Hi everyone, it's Vicky here and today we are back with Mixed Media Tuesday and of course I will be featuring my just released new collection. The collection is called Secret Diary. I have another video where you can see the full collection and you will also find the link down below in the description to that video. So first of all, I'm looking through my rice paper collection and uh, I'm going to pick one of them and show you how you can use it for your backgrounds. These are designed to give you an instant background for your journals, but at the same time they do give you ideas, like the girl on top of the sentiment, for example. So I am going to use this one with the moon, and then I'm going to bring in the ephemeras from my collection. You will find big focal points that are great for our journals, but also perfect for uh, scrapbooking as well as for card makers. And I designed those so that you can easily mix and match them. I just try to do my best in designing elements that you can easily put together clusters with so that they make great focal points for your projects. So here for example I'm showing you how you can play with the girl and uh, place here in different parts and elements of the ephemera and um, you can have uh, the Polaroid, you have the frame, you have the moon, the stack of books, the moon, uh, so many different uh, uh, ways that you can play with them. Here's another girl that you can play with. I'm just showing you ideas on how you can put together a focal point for your art journal. So for this journal, I decided to go with the girl that is sitting on top of the moon, but I'm just showing you how easy it is to play with what you get. I will be sharing tons of projects using my new collection. The collection is uh, called Secret Diary, by the way, and uh, it is in collaboration with Stamperia, as always. So once I picked what I need to work with, I'm going to put everything aside and let's work first on the background. Again, for the background, I'm going with the rice paper and you can see you get the idea already on the rice paper. You can use it as it is or pop the elements on top of it, as I'm going to do later on. So first of all, I need to work with this uh, rice paper. This is an A4 sized paper and I need to work with it and use elements of it on top of my page. So uh, one easy way to tear rice paper is to use water. I'm just using a clean brush with water and drawing a line where I need my rice paper to tear. I am going to tear it with my fingers and this way I will have a lovely edge with um, fibers. This is going to blend lovely into my page once I stick it down and it makes this edge makes it really easy to blend and uh, cover it up with other mediums so it becomes as part of your page easier. So by doing this technique and separating parts of the rice paper with a torn edge is going to give you elements to stick on top of your background, which is a great technique to break down that blank space. It's going to give you elements that are already there for you. You just have to stick them down and it's a great start for a new project. Now, of course, don't throw away any leftovers. This part that I'm not going to use on this page, for example, is perfect for a tag. All you need to do is just stick it down, you have a beautiful background already, and just add elements on top. Now to stick everything down, I'm going to use my rice paper glue by Stamperia. This is a great rice paper glue because not only it is forgiving, so if you stick the rice paper in a wrong uh, uh, way, uh, you can always lift it and reposition it, but at the same time it um, uh, dries completely matte, which is a look that I absolutely love. I prefer it to the glossy look. You can also use the rice paper glue at the bottom to stick the rice paper and then on top you can use the same glue to seal it down. You can always use your scissors to cut off any excess of the rice paper once everything is dry or like I like to do, just use a sanding block. Now, just like with every other one of my collections, I hand picked specific colors that match the collection. So there is a set of six acrylic paints available for this collection. Uh, for this project, I will be using two colors from that set and I'm going to mix the ivory with the blue color. I'm going to put those colors on my palette and uh, with a sponge dabber, I'm going to dab the color on my page. I'm dabbing where there is no rice paper 
touching the edges of the rice paper. This way I kind of uh, make sure that it blends in with the rest of the color. And you can still get the texture of the uh, rice paper as well as the designs, but at the same time the um, edges are kind of covered, they kind of uh, disappear into the paint. Now take your time for this process, it looks like I'm working very fast, but the truth is that this is in fast forward, so I'm just uh, loading uh, my brush with more ivory or with more blue, depending on how it looks on the page and if I want lighter or darker areas. And even if it doesn't look perfect, don't worry too much, because this is just a background, it is just a base, and we will do more techniques on top of it. Now since I do have all that color in my palette, I do dilute it with water to make it more runny and then I'm going to add some splatters. So I'm absolutely happy with how this background came together and let's do some stamping. Now for this collection I have designed two new stamp sets. This is the one that is perfect for generic backgrounds. It's one that you can have in your stash and use again and again. As you can see the designs are really perfect for backgrounds. And I did have such a stamp set. It was called Elements that I designed a couple of years ago. It was super popular so I had to design a new one since the other one is now discontinued. So I'm using blue navy here to do the stamping. It is going to add a subtle visual texture on my background. You can definitely go with black if you like, but I'm going for, soft, uh, for a softer background today. I'm just stamping randomly and you can see that I'm not even using a stamping block. I want to have that organic look and feel on my background without perfect um, uh, stamping where you can actually read what it says. I'm also going to use another one. These are made uh, so that you can mix and match. Now just because this is uh, so small I'm going to use a stamping block but it is designed to give you an organic look, just a little bit of um, texture there. And uh, I'm mainly stamping where I have stamped already before with the text stamp. So I'm kind of creating clusters. I'm also rotating the stamp to get a different pattern. So I'm happy with this stamping and let's move on to the next step. In my Secret Diary in your collection you will find four different stencils. I will be using this beautiful one with the stars, the moon and all that text out of all the four designs that I came up with for this collection. This is probably my favorite stencil. I absolutely love the uniqueness of it and those text borders. And you will see me using this stencil in many of the projects that I have uh, lined up for the next uh, couple of weeks. And now previously, if you noticed, I was debating with myself whether I want to use volume paste, which is white, or glamour paste, which gives, which gives that uh, golden effect on uh, my project. I decided to go with the glamour paste. My glamour paste, by the way, is a little bit dry. I have been using this jar for a couple of years, I believe now. And as you see me applying this product, you will see that it is very, very thick. Normally it's not that thick, but uh, to tell you the truth, it works because you know that uh, you will get a perfect impression without the product doing, going under the stencil. Previously I was focusing on the star elements of this stencil, now I will do borders. And I switched to volume paste, so my borders are going to be white. Uh, if you find that uh, the designs are very close to one another, you can always use some masking tape to mask off some parts of the stencil that you don't want to transfer. I'm very careful with my spatula, applying only where the border I want to use is. And then I'm going to move on and do another area. And these are perfectly readable. There are uh, verses from poems and you will see me using this stencil a lot again and again in many projects. Secret Diary is uh, probably my favorite collection that I have designed up to now. Don't tell my other collections. And uh, I'm super, super happy with it. It is really very close to my heart. And I really can't wait to see the projects that everyone is going to make by using it. Now you see here I'm playing with my ephemera and I could have used the girl directly on top of the design on the rice paper. However, by sticking that extra moon on top, it is slightly uh, bigger 
and uh, it uh, stands out a little bit more. Now I'm playing with all the ephemera, I'm trying to decide how my composition is going to go. I want to embellish the moon with some leaves and flowers, I want the girl to sit on top and I want her to have wings, so I will use one of the butterflies for that. And on the other page I want to create a little cluster so that it's not completely empty. And for that I'm going to use a little uh, um, ticket as well as a couple of leaves. So I left this part unedited, not in fast forward or anything, so that you can see exactly how my mind is working while I'm doing the composition. And if those ephemera are not enough, you can always find elements to cut out from your paper pads. The paper pad is available on 12 by 12 and 8 by 8, so you get the same designs in different sizes. So this is the first page on the paper pad and I fuzzy cut some flowers from here and this is the last page from the paper pad and again I fuzzy cut some elements. Here is everything that I have, a couple of tickets, some flowers and leaves and a butterfly. And it's finally time to put everything together. I'm going to peel off the backing and uh, stick everything down. Uh, it gives you the option, the ephemeras are self-adhesive, so if you like you can uh, use that or you can definitely go with glue if you want or even with foam tape if you want to add some dimension. I don't want to have that white edge all around, so I'm just inking up the edges just slightly to make sure that it doesn't stand out as much and I will do the same thing with the moon. I'm only inking the edge, I don't want to give a vintage vibe to my uh, project, that's why I'm not overusing that coffee dye ink that I have here. And now you can tell that I'm super excited with having my collection coming out today and uh, I cannot wait to uh, hear your feedback. Uh, if you haven't done so already, make sure to go on my YouTube channel and check the release video where you can see the whole collection. And uh, it's just a three minutes video and uh, you get a glimpse of everything that is included and maybe you can choose what you like. Uh, the collection is available as of today. Many shops already caught the collection, but uh, other shops are just waiting for it since it is um, on its way. So if you cannot find the collection yet, give it a few days and um, it will appear in your favorite shops where you always go for your Stamperia collections. So I am creating a little cluster on this side of the page at the bottom corner, just uh, mixing little elements that I fuzzy cut from the pattern paper. Now there is a page that is full of uh, phrases. Uh, these are quotes or sentiments that you can use and uh, I made sure that uh, when I was designing them that they can be used uh, for art journaling as well as for scrapbooking and card making. You will find some generic uh, greetings as well there. I am inking up the edges again like I did with the rest of the elements and I'm sticking everything down by using my matte glue and uh, these phrases you can find them in a chipboard uh, version so you can easily use them on your projects and they will add dimension however for an art journal I like to go flat it's better for not adding too much bulk on uh, your pages so I like to cut them out from the pattern paper now let's do some finishing touches, some fun things to bring everything together and add more details and finishing touches. So here I'm using uh, acrylic paint and with my sponge dabber I'm going all around the edges. I'm just dabbing all the way, creating a lighter border. This is going to give a lovely finish and I like the organic look that I get. I'm making sure that I don't cover up that stenciling that I did. But I find that uh, this gives a more dreamy look and feel into the whole composition. And of course I need to bring in my white gel pen. I'm going to outline the quotes. I'm going to add some highlights on the girl as well as all the other cutouts. Again, as always, I'm not paying too much attention on where I'm adding those uh, white sketchy lines. These are going to add more into the look and feel of the finished project and I'm not uh, using them as highlights so I don't have to pay attention on where the um, light may be, the light source might be. Just add some highlights here and there to make it look more whimsical. 
And of course, I cannot finish without adding my white splatters. So I have to uh, cover up the face. I don't want any funny splatters there. Another fun finishing touch is to use a contour liner and add some dots or even lines here and there. Here I'm adding only dots and I use the golden one that matches with the stenciling. And that finishes the first project that I'm sharing with my brand new collection, Secret Diary. I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired. Here are some close-up photos on the project. Just like always, links to everything I used can be found down below. Thank you all so much for joining me and I'll see you all next time.